if yeah. I cave and don't go to the gym, I feel not as physically good mm -hmm. and then I feel bad because I didn't do it. If I eat a chicken breast and some vegetables, I usually mm -hmm. feel energized from that. Oh know? yeah. Right. And so I'm I'm trying to like remind myself of that as much as possible. Do the hard thing now mm -hmm. and I will feel better in the long run versus do the easy thing now and feel worse in the long run. My guest today is Clint Black, not the country music singer. Um, Clint asked me if I offered any training or coaching or mentoring, which I, I don't, um, but I suggested we have a conversation on the podcast and see if I could relay any of the things that have helped me that could possibly help him. So that is the episode for today. You can find Clint on Instagram. Whoa, it's Clint. Clint Black, welcome to the American Glutton Podcast. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here, man. So you asked me if I did any mentoring or programming or training, and I I don't really do that, but I thought we could have a conversation on here and we could I could I could give you any advice I have. Um I just want to say first and foremost, I can only talk about what's worked for me and and uh, maybe loosely on statistical stuff that I've read, but I'm not a big like everybody should do X kind of a person. So right. a lot of it will just be like, this was my experience with X, Y, or Z. But before we do any of that, what what's going on with you? What has your experience been? What are you dealing with? Um. <laughs> Well, hey, it's I mean, a lot. I'm just throwing it, it all at you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a big question there, man. Um, it's gosh, it's been one of those things I've always struggled with my weight. Um, I mean, growing up, you know, dad's in the Marines, uh, mom's a stay at home mom and, you know, we're, uh, kind of, kind of, you know, doing what we can getting out trying to walk the neighborhoods and, uh, the, the base housing and whatnot, wherever we were stationed at. And, you know, I, dude, I used to ride, you know, ride my bike everywhere. It's one of those things. The neighborhoods were safe. So I was out, I was an active kid. Um, but as far back as I remember, I've always been kind of, you know, a, a heavier kid. Um, and then that's kind of continued into adulthood. Um, now I'm, you know, I'm in my thirties and uh, man, it's, it's kind of spiraled into this with, you know, wife and kids and just life. And it's put me to a point where I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 500 pounds. Um, I've been told I carry it well, which is a weird thing to so, hear. So, so did I, apparently I was you know, told that too. Yeah. It's such a weird thing to hear, you know, is that people are like, Oh, well you carry it so well, I would have never thought like, okay. Yeah. You know, small confidence boost, but you know, it's, it's still like, ah. Uh. Um, but, you know, I, I've tried different diets and, um, you know, you hear about the fat, all the different fad diets and uh, all those different things. And um, I, I tell you, the one I had the most success on, I know diets are all basically, most of them work because of the caloric deficit. I mean, I, you know, like the math makes sense. Um but the one that worked the best for me was keto. And I've, I've heard that works well for a lot of people if they can actually do the macros correctly and everything. I, uh, back in, it was pre COVID like 2018, 2017, I lost over a hundred pounds on keto. Um, and then I've, I've really, you know, had some time to reflect on that and think back and, uh, the, the turning point in that moment was, or at the end of my, my journey with keto, or at least that stint for it. Uh, I went out to, uh, I don't know if you guys have like golden corral, like the, the buffets. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Right. So uh, a buddy of mine, uh, I went out with him for breakfast one day and we went in there and I'm like, Oh, I can do it. There's tons of choices. You know, I can stay, stay on the thing. And, uh, no, that was pretty much it, man. I, I went in there and I ate, and I was like, well, I'll have a, I'll have a biscuit or I'll have this one thing or, you know, and then ended up blowing the whole diet right there and then could never get my mind back into it. Um, yeah. you know, regained all that weight. Uh, and I'm back, 
it, I think when I started that, I was just over 400 pounds and then lost that. I was getting, you know, it had, had crossed the threshold to where I was. I think I got to like 301 or something. I mean, I was very close to getting under 300. And I, I you know, gained it all back and then some, obviously, being at 500. Um, and now it's it's the struggle with, it, you know, um, gosh, what would you call it? I, I guess you're not only the the physical aspect of things, but the mental aspect of things as well. And being uh, dealing with anxiety and depression and all those sorts of things that that they kind of attack you in a way. And I've realized here in the past few months uh, with some issues I've had going on that anxiety has been a huge thing, um, which is in some ways it's you know that can be like a, a crippling thing. And you go out seeking help. And they give you, you know, everybody wants to, the doctor's doing their best thing that they know to do, which is here's a pill for that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it doesn't all, sure, it takes the edge off or something of that nature, but it doesn't, it's not a fix. It's a, it's a mandate on a bigger problem. Um, but it's kind of led me to this point where I'm, uh, well, I mean, I was, I saw your transformation, which congratulations, by the way, that's incredible, man. Thank you. Yeah, dude. I know that's a ton of work. Um, yeah. And it's just incredible to see it's inspiring. And that's why I messaged you asking for any sort of advice or uh, anything like that. Cause uh, my biggest thing here in the the past, you know, six months has been uh, not only is the, the anxiety kind of changes the way it affects you, but it also uh, like it's, it's adjusted how I do things. And it's actually an odd thing that's kind of works in my favor. Um, Anxiety levels start to go up, which weirdly enough for me makes me want to get up and move around. Oh, wow. Which is, you know, it's interesting. Normally it's like shut down, throw a blanket over your head, dark room. I don't yeah. want to do anything. Right. Um, this is like, if I'm still, I, I feel off. So I've been doing a lot of walking. I mean, if it's just pacing the house um, or um, I go out and I found a, a you know loop in our neighborhood where I can go walk and it's from my driveway, make the loop all the way back to it. And it's just over a mile. So I've been trying to go out and do those things, but it's still like, you know, it's, it's rough, man. The, the, you get out and want to do things, the anxiety gets you and you want to go walk, but then you don't know what to do diet wise. And everybody tells you get in the gym and, and do this and you know, get your heart rate up. And well, you know, it's, it's a struggle, man. Yeah. Okay. You know, let me say this first. Like um, I did many, many years of dieting and then gaining the weight back keto, uh, the zone diet, the South beach diet, Beverly Hills diet, which was, uh, no, the Atkins diet. I also did the Beverly Hills diet. It's a fucking nightmare. Don't do it. It's uh, you just eat pineapple for three days and then you eat. Oh, no. It's, it's awful. Um, the biggest thing that honestly had the most impact on me um, was really the way I thought about myself and my condition and and what I was going through and my what I wanted um mm. and I I think of diet as uh in the way we're talking about it as a a short-term fix a diet also in mm. my opinion is a band-aid it's like a pill for anxiety I I also had to recognize that I have anxiety I have depression and a lot of the times I was treating that by eating. Eating was a, a very helpful thing. If I felt anxious, food would settle me. If I felt sad, food would make me feel better. If I felt mm -hmm. manic and great, food would make that better too. You, you know, right? food was very much something I used um, to make myself be feel better emotionally um, and mentally and more stable. Um, and you know, like, I'm not saying you have to have every 
exact aspect that I have, but I think l- looking for ways that you interact with food, um, like finding a purpose for food that is uh, less harmful to yourself. If you deem your condition mm-hmm. harmful and you are looking to uh, create a better or a different set of circumstances for yourself, then identifying where you're using food in a way that is contributing to this condition that is outside of I'm hungry. Do you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and like there's other aspects that can play into it. There's kind of multiple reasons anybody will eat. You can, you can become hungry from advertising when your body doesn't need the energy. So recognizing that too is important, but even beyond that, for me, a lot of the time, you know, I would get home at night and ha- and not have had, you know, the average day I know for me at 500 pounds was not, a, was typically not a great day. I'd get home, <laughs> right. I'd be sore. I'd have had maybe some uncomfortable social interactions and food would make me feel better. And so right. recognizing that and going like, oh, you know, it's one thing to recognize. And then I think it's, it's also steps to stop doing it because it, it, it's not always as easy as like, Oh, I, I spotted that I'm having this interaction. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I think walking is a great idea. Walking's not going to get you to where you want to go. It's just a, it's just a component in an overall kind of structure of your life that could be beneficial. Sure. Um, the other thing is, as far as diet goes, diets um, diets are very tricky because, for the most part, keto. I, I haven't known many people where just doing keto gets you all the way to where you want to go. It never got me all the way. I I definitely lost weight doing keto, and mm. every time. I'd get some weight loss under my belt. It would, I would stop losing weight far long before I was at a weight that I was like, this is a good weight to be at. Well, uh, sure. I, mean, I mean, like nowhere near it for me. Um, right. I got to about 300 pounds, in fact, on keto, oh, okay. you know, after various other diets, but like I took mm-hmm. off a hundred pounds multiple times doing keto. And then it just stopped for months and months and months. And this is there, there are some technical reasons for that where at you know 400 pounds your body requires a certain amount of fuel to maintain its size Mm -hmm. and if you cut out one entire macronutrient you're probably going to just be eating less because of it and so you lose weight but then there comes a point where you're now eating enough to maintain your size at 300 pounds. And if you don't reduce what you're putting into it at that point, you will just not lose weight anymore. Right. Um, And so that wasn't a great kind of uh, strategy for me because I really want to, you know, consider that my condition is chronic. It's not going away. Mm. And I'm going to have to work at it every day. So I can't pick something short term. Now, if if you said to me, like, I'm celiac, I don't eat bread, I have an aversion to carbohydrates, I have X, Y, and Z kind of autoimmune thing that gets flared up from complex carbohydrates, so I'm limiting them, then maybe sure. you could do keto for life. Um, oh, sure. You still will most likely have to reduce the amount you're eating at some point to get to the weight you want to get to. Um and so as far as how I eat, not diet in the sense of like a short-term restrictive thing to, to, mm-hmm. to intentionally lose weight, but just the way I eat, I, I had to, for the most part, stop eating processed foods um, because I find it very, very easy and I feel way more compelled to overeat those. Um, so I limit them dramatically and, and spent years, in fact, not eating them. And now if I do eat them, it's in- incredibly rare. And I always go into it walking myself through, 
I'm going to want to finish this entire bag of chips. It's not going to be just the handful or the serving. (laughs) Right. You know, I have to like tell my wife, like, I want to have some of these chips. Don't Mm -hmm. let me polish off the bag and go for a second one, you know, and she's really helpful with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I basically figured out a way that was a compromise with how I was eating that I would be willing to do forever, which is, you know, mostly lean proteins and vegetables and some moderate carbohydrates. Um, And then to, to with the weight loss portion, it's just a reduced version of that. So that when I'm, when I'm into like, okay, now I'm maintaining, and this is basically what I have to do forever. If I don't want to gain weight, it's just a little bit more of what I've been eating anyway. Um, yeah. And there were lots, lots of compromises, you know, I, I, uh, I love a Big Mac. I love a Big Mac filled oh, with sure. McDonald's fries and sweet <laughs> sour sauce poured on it. You know what I mean? When oh, sure. the times when McRib is there, I think like, God, wouldn't it be great to have it? Like that food is, I find to be delicious. Um, yeah. but that's pretty much off limits to me now. Um, you know, I can't tell you the last time. I, I think I, in the past five years, I've been to McDonald's one time, and that was because uh, my teenage daughter said In and Out had the best fries, and I was like, "You're crazy! That's like <laughs> right." And and had to take her, and we got a small bag of fries, and we didn't finish it, and that was the last, you know. So oh, sure, so, but for the most part, it's really like how I go into it thinking about it, you know, like all the diets I did, I was considering that the problem was my weight and, Mm. and I never had any lasting success. I could lose weight. I Mm. was, I was capable of losing weight. I was not capable of keeping weight off thinking about it that way because I would lose the weight and go, well, the problem's gone now I'm fixed. And then the weight would come right back. And I did that so many times, you know, the, I guess the definition or one way to say insanity is doing the same thing over and over and again, (laughs) expecting a different result. And, and I didn't recognize it for 15 years, man. Um, Mm. And when it became about, Oh, my behavior with food in general is not, is leading me down this path. I need to work on my behavior that's when I started to have real lasting change. Does any of that resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I've thought, I mean, here recently, I say recently as in the past, you know, maybe two or three months, honestly, with the anxiety doing the things it's doing and and me trying to deal with that. And um, I, my genuinely, my thoughts have been, why the why am I with food? Why am I why do I handle the relationship with food the way I do? Why, you know, and then it's kind of come to that conclusion. And I guess the easiest way to say it is that I've I realize I have a bad relationship with food. And it's that like you talked about, like, you know, you get uh you have a bad day, you want to come home and you eat for comfort. And and it's I absolutely do that. Um, you know, even when it comes down to you know, little stuff. I can have the best day. Like you said, you, even on those days, you want to come home and heck yeah, I'm going to have a freaking big meal, you know, steak and all that, you know, do it all up. Right. Um, and then snacking, man, you, you know, the, like you said, and I, that's incredible. Like the, I know the, I can't imagine the willpower it takes to go, I'm not going to eat that whole family size bag of chips, even though yeah. it'd be nice to polish them off, man. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sober person too. And, mm-hmm. Uh, my relationship with drugs and alcohol were pretty much <laughs> the same thing I was doing with them is what I'm doing with food is I, I, I'm uncomfortable I, in my skin. I'm uncomfortable yeah. around people. I'm, I, that's just my lot. And yeah. dr- drugs make me comfortable, you know, right. I, I'm un- sitting in my house alone I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable mm-hmm. physically. I'm uncomfortable mentally. I'm uncomfortable emotionally. And and drugs make it better. And so does food. And the tricky thing with food is you you gotta 
you got to eat the, the, the mm -hmm. pretty near term <laughs> end result of just not eating is like, you just can't do that forever. But I can, right. I can, I can abstain from drugs and alcohol. I don't know what I would do if I had to have a, a little bit of cocaine every day. You oh know, yeah. I don't, no, I... Or, or a beer. My wife can order a glass of wine with dinner and not finish it. And, and it drives me crazy. Like I don't understand not finishing the glass of wine, but she can yeah. also have five chips and not, and not need a sixth. And that too, I, I just, I'm different from her, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, that's, um, that's something my, my wife and, and I've got friends who do the same thing, you know, they'll, They'll order a beer and they don't finish the beer. And I'm I'm very much the uh the you know the the clean plate club. You hear people talking about that girl, yeah. you teach your kids that type of thing. And I'm like, no, dude, clean what do you mean? Finish it. You've only got, you know, a few chips left, or you've got like a quarter of that beer sitting there left. Or and it's like the impulse to finish that is so strong, even when you don't want it. Yeah. So like, no, I'm I'm definitely beyond full or or however at that point. And it's like, nah, but I'm gonna finish it. It's there. It's just a little bit. Yeah. But that's the thing, you know, it's that that's hard too. It, it's it's and not by the way, none of it's easy. It's all hard. <laughs> um I think recognizing that and recognizing and you know, uh all plans go out the window once the first shot is fired or whatever the war saying is, you know, it's like sure. ha having a plan, like, God, you know, tell God about right. your plan. These kind of sayings are, seem to be accurate, but right. I, I go into almost every situation, you know, I have my routine, my routine gets disrupted a whole lot, but I have sure. my set routine and within my routine after years, it's not so hard. Um, I know what foods my kids are going to demand to be in the house or bring into the house. That's not something I should be eating. And sure. so that, that doesn't bother me so much, but I've had to like spend a little bit of time with them, not having foods in the house that are super right up my alley. And that was a sacrifice they made that they were okay with. Um, and now, you know, if there's a bag of chips in the pantry, it, I just don't even look, think about it. But there was a time where I like needed to have some space and time away from it. And now I know like, okay, if I'm going into the pantry and I'm hungry and my options are my kids chips or the celery sticks in the fridge, mm -hmm. Right. I have to go for the celery sticks. Mm -hmm. um, but there was some time where I needed to, you know, um, if you're trying to get sober, getting a job at a bar is not a great idea. Right, right. You know what I mean? And maybe down the line, you'll be okay to work at a bar or go to a bar socially. But in the beginning, mm -hmm. getting your sea legs under you. And so there's nothing wrong with, you know, I think about shows like Survivor, uh, not Survivor, The Biggest Loser. Did you ever watch that oh, show? Absolutely. Hell yeah. So I think like, yeah, of course, most of those people gained the weight back. They were mm. completely removed from their lives. They had trainers, they had dietitians, they were provided with the f diet food mm -hmm. and they were scrutinized every day. They had to get on a scale every day. Like, Right. They had every motivation in the world to lose weight. And then they're plucked out of there and plopped back into their real life with right. no, with no change to their structure whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a recipe for failure. I, I, I believe that you can change your environment. You can change the circumstances with it, which within which you live, but then reintroducing the old stuff, I think has to be done gradiently or we're just going to fall on our faces, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I agree with that, man. That's it's, it's hard to take on those type of changes in my mind. Cause you know, you can, you can sit around and think about them all day, which is one of those things that I, I mean, if you're like me, I sit around and I'm, I'm contemplating all these different 
you know, how's this conversation going to go? And how's how if I do A, B and C, what is D going to look like? Um, and I do that with food as well um, and, and trying to do the diet and, and you know, picture exercise. And, you know, sometimes you can picture the, the, the guy at the end of the road. I've done all the things correctly. Here's where, you know, that that, you know, the, the ideal picture of myself is going to be at. But then it's like, OK, well, he's over here at the, you know, you know, step 100. Well, I'm at step zero. So let's take the first step. What does it look like? And it's it's kind of the beginning of that journey. It's such a daunting task to take on all those different aspects. And it, it gets heavy, man. Yeah. I mean, it really does. You know? I, I, th- yes, it does. I, I think that that the burden of that um, had many times kept me from s- beginning. Um, I, I think having a, a, a very specific goal is troublesome, has been troublesome for me too, for, for a multitude of reasons. One is it's always really far away. And, right. and putting things into long-term perspective like that can be really hard for me. Right. Um, the other thing is I've gotten to those goals or, or as, as close, you know, and I've never once been really happy with them. I've, there's never been one time where I thought I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I do X, Y, and Z. And I, and I go like, this is perfect. This is wonderful. Right. And almost every time when I set up a finish line like that, once I get there, it's just a rapid race back to the beginning. And so I, I, again, my thinking on it has changed and all I'm ever trying to do now is win today. What, what, yeah. what, what, what am I going to accomplish today? How can I better myself today? And it does. And there's, there's no massive benefit. You can't better yourself too tremendously in a day. So right. the odds are this, it, the, it's not, it's not like you have <laughs> some huge thing to do today. I, mm. If I can get 0.1% better today or 0.01% better today, yeah, I know over time that will accumulate and soon the me of the past will be unrecognizable to me today. So what can I do in a day? And, and I don't want it to be anything that's going to fuck up me doing at least as much tomorrow. So yeah. I used to go to the gym and just brutalize myself. And that, uh, you know, people talk about sustainability and lifestyle change and it all is true. It all makes sense. Mm-hmm. But like those words sometimes bum me out or irritate me for stupid, useless reasons I, I got to be able to replicate every day what I'm doing. So if I'm doing something today that ruins me doing it tomorrow, it's too much. Mm-hmm. If I'm not pushing myself, it's not enough. I got to push myself. It's got to, I've got to be putting some effort into it and I've got to be able to do it again tomorrow. That's, those are the kind of, uh, boundaries of yeah. what I'm doing. The other thing that I do, you're a parent and maybe this will this will sound similar to you like a lot of my life is filled with so many different things i have a job i have work i have kids to deal with i have my wife i have bills to pay i have stuff around the house that i've got to get done for me right. i've got stuff for my kids i've got stuff for my wife somebody's got homework they need to work on and the only for, it, it, it's odd but and I can't do this for, for me, when I go to work, everything takes a back burner. It's the mm. only time I get to just go like, okay, all the errands that my wife wants me to run, all the uh, little f- cycles that I have around the house, I can't think about those while I'm at work. But right. even that, I'm just hyper-focused on work. I got mm. to learn my lines. I've got to think about the scene. But it's like a very peaceful time because everything else gets shut out. I also take a small period of time every day for myself 
to work on myself. And whether that's going to the gym, meal prepping, thinking about what I want to accomplish and how that will fit into the rest of the day of the chaos. But I, mm-hmm. I, I set aside sometimes, sometimes I do some journaling about how I'm feeling in that moment or, uh, you know, the night before I, I it, this tends to happen more around the holidays, but like, I, I, I it was either, I think it was a year and a half ago around the holidays, but I like, made it through a Christmas dinner and I was so pleased with how I ate for two reasons. One, I had everything I wanted. I had a piece of dessert. I had the Pillsbury roll that my kids made and they wrapped cheese and ham in it. And it was fantastic. And I had, um, meat and potatoes, but I had portions where when I was done, I wasn't hungry anymore, but I was not full. And I was like, that's, That's how a quote unquote normal person eats. This is amazing. And then the rest of the people and my guests start drinking. I don't drink. They Mm -hmm. move outside and I think I'm going to clean up. And, you know, it's one of those clean your plate things where it's like, Mm -hmm. am I going to just take these two tablespoons of potatoes and put them in Tupperware or no, I'll just eat them. And I wound up eating three times more while cleaning than I had sitting at dinner. And Mm -hmm. my investigation into that is really the next day, I take my hour that I've partitioned for myself and I write about it. What was going on with me and that I did that and how did it make me feel and how did I feel and was I compelled to do it and try to figure it out in that way. Um, You know, I can almost black out and and not be like cognitively aware when at certain points when i'm interacting with food Mm -hmm. and then almost come to like oh my god i i wasn't i was that was not me thinking through that if i can catch that early enough doesn't even mean I, i i stop myself but if i can catch it and try to stay as aware as possible Mm -hmm. Um, and catching it is not for me, you know, as I'm chewing, that's way too late. Catching it is the thought occurs to me, a Big Mac sounds good. That's it. I have to catch it that early. It's not, you know, when I'm carrying the food in from the car or when I'm Mm -hmm. at the drive through or when I'm ordering it or when I'm turning into it's way 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 earlier but i've got to start to try to be looking for it just when the first thought occurs and when that thought occurs usually what i do is go like i'm not interested and then do something active i love what you're talking about with your walk sometimes i'll just stand up and do some squats and try to break the headspace away from that thought um but that's been pretty helpful to me too that kind of stuff Okay. In a world besieged by unhealthy choices, where fast and ultra-processed foods are omnipresent and dominate society, you can fight back. Introducing the Prep Deck, a radical new tool that turns temptation into healthy choices. This is not a diet, and we realize that this commercial has told you nothing at all about the product itself. Please follow the link below for more information. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, I, God, man, I, I identify with that on a, on a deep level because I've, I, I'm like, I'm glad that you're, like, you're saying you're catching them way early, and that's something I'm definitely gonna try to use because I have caught myself. Uh, I've even told my wife about it, man. I, I'll catch myself after the fact. You know, I'm sitting there, you know, meat sweats, and you know, you feel awful. You just, uh, gosh, back, uh, you know, I, I'm a. I'm a stickler for a, a good like Burger King burger. Yeah. Um, I used to go get it. You know, they had like the stackers, like, you know, triple all those stackers, man. We used to go get them. They're, they're cheap. They were like three bucks a piece or something. So I'd go spend, you know, just for me, go spend $20 on burgers and fries and you know just garbage at that point. But, and then the moment, you know, scarfing all that down, but then almost as soon as you're taking that last bite and you really start to feel it really settle on you, yeah. I have that like, 
moment of clarity almost where it's like, why did I just eat all that? Why did I just do that to myself? Um, and that's even, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to explain if you haven't experienced it because yeah. it's, you're not actually unconscious, but it's, oh yeah, but you're also not present for it. It's a very, mm-hmm. very weird thing. Um, I, th- I think about it sometimes like amnesia, you know, like I go yeah, into yeah. these spells or episodes. I've, I've even experienced it sitting at dinner with my wife mm-hmm. where, you know, I'm not going into it going like I'm going to cheat, but it, maybe it's a type of food I really like. And we, we order food and, and then suddenly she has to snap me out of it and go like, Hey, what's going on? Because I'm just focused on getting the food mm-hmm. into me. And I, I go like, Oh, thank you. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> so you know. focused on it right yeah yeah, um, I, yeah I I catching it early for mm-hmm. me has been and I'm not saying it never happens anymore it happens because sure. my wife catches like snaps me out of it occasionally now um but I tend to you know I wouldn't do that with a salad oh sure I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that with a bowl of broccoli. I wouldn't do that with chicken breast. I might do that with steak. Steak oh, is sure. easier for me to do that with or ribs or something. If it's right. got enough fat on it and salt, oh, I, yeah. I could, I could do that. But, but with leaner meats and vegetables, that's, that's not, I'm not going to zone out and go through four pounds of broccoli. Um, right. And so that's what I try to eat for the most part. Um, okay. Kind of focus but, on those foods that keep you away from that mindset or that, that, you know, where you get lost in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's real easy for me to, to get lost in fast food. And so when the, the thought occurs to me, I catch it early, you know, it's, it's very similar for me when the, when the thought occurs, like I would feel better right now if I had a Vicodin, that thought occurs to me a few times a week and it's at that point that I got to, you know, shake it off as though Mm -hmm. I'm in that trance. Like that's not get rid of that thought, do something active, break that cycle of having Mm -hmm. it just because if I sit and meditate on how much better I'd feel with a Vicodin, I will wake up a week from then. And it might Mm -hmm. take a week having taken something like that and be going Mm. like, what happened? Where did I go wrong? Because for a long time, I would try to catch it. Like, no, I need to catch it right as it's going in my mouth. Sure. Impossible. I could never do that. Yeah. Way too late. And it's not, you know, filling the prescription and it's not going to the doctor and it's not making the appointment for the doctor. It's like, lingering in the first instance of the thought which isn't always connected in a very linear rational way it's sometimes separated by days um that's how i navigate that um yeah man really there there are some like practical things i do where where it's like yeah fast food's pretty much off limits um Mm -hmm for the most part, but it's not an absolute thing because, because it's, I also don't want to moralize food to myself and say like, that's bad. And that's good. No one produces a reaction within me that I have difficulty navigating and a bunch of other stuff doesn't. So for the most part, I'm eating this other stuff. Yeah. I really hadn't thought about it that way. Thinking about, I mean, of course there's always the thought of how did that uh, how did what I just ate or what I'm about to eat kind of make me feel, but I hadn't thought about it in the perspective of, uh, you, like we said, getting lost in the food and then trying to, all right, if I eat, like you said, I go eat a big Mac or I go eat this, this big burger, or some sort of fast food, having the, I guess, taking yourself out of that scenario to avoid getting lost and trying to think of, I guess, have the forethought of, what how how is this going to make me feel where is it going to put my mind at instead of how is it going to physically make me feel yeah uh you know because that's such a 
that's a, it's an easy thing. Like we've talked about food is a, it's such an, it, it's like a drug itself. Sometimes it's, you know, that has that, that reaction. We're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to go get that meal and celebrate it. And it's, it's a social thing too. It's, Dude, there. I want to eat to the point where I feel physical euphoria, and mm-hmm. there's 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 a point where I, I I overeat so much that I need to lay down or lean yeah. over on the couch, and there's just a sense. Uh, uh, it's almost a, it is even if I'm even if I'm borderline nauseous, there is mm-hmm. a, a euphoria that it produces in me, and. Right. It, it, it's very similar in that way to drugs. Um, mm-hmm. And I've never been able to do that with chicken breast, with tuna, with, I, I mean, I can't even really do that with white rice. I'd, I'd have right. to put sesame oil on it or something. Mm-hmm. You know? um, but man, can I do that with cheeseburgers and oh, yeah. ice cream and... Even yeah. even barbecue, you know, I mm-hmm. can. I, that's those are the things. Bags of chips, um, especially if you've got some delicious dip to put on it, you know. Add, oh, absolutely. Add to the chip, like my interaction, I am looking for. Uh, it's mental, but it's also physical. A, a, a reaction that is producing something other than just like I'm fueling my body with this food. Mm-hmm. you know yeah i man that's i tell you i've had that one of my uh recent things with it being uh your memorial day weekend this past weekend uh parents and grandparents and sisters back in town everybody got together uh you know we grilled burgers and hot dogs and um i don't know if you've ever done it where you do up uh like sour cream and a packet of the uh it's like oh, ranch ranch dip yes. mix food we did that. And that's one of my, my weak points. I remember that's a, it's almost a nostalgic thing. My dad used to have it. He'd do it up in the fridge and have it in a you know Tupperware bowl in the fridge yeah. and just occasionally get him some out. And we had a big container of it. And I haven't been hungry uh, with some of the stuff I've had going on lately. Just no, really my appetite's been odd or non-existent. And that, that's sitting on the counter, everybody's fixing plates and, I was like, oh yeah, that's, you know, that's going to be a good one there. Yeah. So I, and it's, you know, we sat down and watched a movie and I got up in the middle of the movie, broke, the, you know, not even thinking, pulled that out of the fridge. Everything had been put away, pulled that out of the fridge, pulled out a bag of chips and started just dipping chips, standing in my kitchen, eating that. And then it was like, where the heck am I at, man? Yeah. And I had been eating, you know, standing there for, it had to have been five, 10 minutes, just chip after chip. And then I was like, well, crap. So I, I put it all up. And then, you know, an hour went by and I'm like, man, I feel like garbage. It's, you know, in the moment, it's so good. But then it's that after that really sits with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, for for me, There there is something to like delayed gratification is is for me always better. And and if I want to satisfy an urge right now, Mm -hmm. pushing that, pushing through that, I feel better physically. And if I don't want to do something hard and it's always with difficult things, you know, like going to the gym is always difficult. I never want to do it. If I do it and I'm successful at making it to the gym and exercising, I feel better. If I, cave and don't go to the gym i feel not as physically good Mm -hmm. and then i feel bad because i didn't do it it's the same thing with these food cravings like the thought occurs to me this thing's going to be delicious i really want to eat it Mm -hmm. that satisfying that right now desire yeah always leads me to feeling crappy later and whether it's like guilt or actually physically (laughs) crappy you know because yeah yeah i'm with you. you you eat that stuff it doesn't usually make you feel good but like if i eat a chicken breast and some vegetables i usually mm-hmm. feel energized from that oh know? yeah right and so i'm i'm trying to like remind myself of that as much as possible do the hard thing now mm-hmm. and i will feel better in the long run versus do the easy thing now and feel worse in the long run you know there's right. a lot of uh, it, getting to your size being as big as i was requires effort 
we put effort into it. We are eating a lot of food. We are procuring a lot of food. That's effort. You can trade that effort mm -hmm. into a little bit more effort in the present for a longer term feeling of well-being or you know what i mean it's just a shade do you want to do you want to yeah. do it now or exper experience because like this is life man we're gonna yeah. feel we're gonna have hardships one way or the other and we can either kick it down the road and actually have it be harder or yeah. do the the tough thing now which is usually for me is saying no to myself or saying yes, you have to do the thing you don't want to do, which is whether it's mm -hmm. like, no, don't eat that or go to the gym or stand up yeah. and do something. Or I just thought of a Big Mac. I better get up and do some squats and think about something else, you know, do something yeah. active. And it doesn't mean I have to go, you know, I go to the gym, I have a great workout, I feel better, I get home, I start to think about some food thing. It doesn't mean I have to go back to the gym, but breaking mm -hmm. that thought cycle with something active, even if it's just for a minute, right. has been really helpful and keeps me from going down that path where I come to having done something I didn't really want to do. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that got it. it it's... It's great to talk to you because that that really does make it you know it makes a lot of sense. It's it's interesting like thinking about changing uh, changing the way I think about those sorts of things and trying to you know like we talked about earlier visualize the plan type of deal and it just man you know and I realize like like we talked about it's not easy it's 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 hard work. Um, God, man, does it sound easy, right? It's just, you know, you just, you'd make the change, you know, you just do it. It's no, but, 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 but it is more than just make the change because yeah. there's action steps for each of them. You know what I mean? I, that's the other, yeah. the other thing, like making some time for yourself where mm -hmm. your phone is off, you're not on the computer, you're not being stimulated by anything else. Your your wife and kids know no this is dad's time for him to do and 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 make it an appointment you know what I mean like if, if yeah. you're supposed to be at work at nine if you are always late that's going to be a problem show up on right. time make an actual appointment with yourself and do some work on like what do I need to do to accomplish the day successfully for myself yeah. um you know. And, and again, it doesn't have to be as hard as you might imagine. You, you know, I think for me, the points where, where it gets harder is when I don't take that time to make my plan and then something disrupts my pattern, which I've worked so hard to create yeah. and my schedule and I haven't thought through it, then it can be really tricky. But right. like, you know, if you're, especially if you're, if you're going to introduce more whole foods into your diet, you don't have mm -hmm. to be starving. You know, it doesn't have right. to be that it gets tricky. If you like, if you work at a restaurant, yeah, that's going to be hard. Sure. If you spend a lot of time going out to dinner with people, that's going to be hard. If I don't know what your wife and kids eat, but if they're eating pizza every night and you're eating salad, that could be really tough. Right. Um, you know, getting the people around you on board with your plan, even if it's like, listen, I'm not asking you guys to never eat pizza again, but can we spend some time with it not in the house? Because it's yeah. really tough for me to not eat it when it's here. Um, mm -hmm. Having people who are really supportive of you, um, you know, and I think it can be rough with some relationships where if like one guy's like well my solution is to be a vegan and i demand that everybody in my house is a vegan that's not always mm. going to work you know there, yeah. there's got to be some some thought about them too you don't want mm. your little kids on diets i i mean <laughs> right you know what i mean um and so but having them be a part of your team 
mm-hmm. and and talking to them about everything and actually giving them some position of power. I don't know how old your kids are. If they're two, maybe this is not <laughs> it. But like, I know my youngest yeah. daughter, 17, mm-hmm. if... Uh, the, uh, the one other thing I would say, I, I don't eat in secret anymore. I used to, I used to eat in secret and that's a big, big, big no, no for me now. So that's a foundational principle for me. I don't want to sneak food at all. And I find yeah. that if I do a little bit of sneaking, it always for me leads to a lot of sneaking. Um, you know, one chip out of sight that I'm swallowing will lead to me having to sneak out of the house to buy a new bag of chips to replace mm-hmm. the empty bag of chips. Oh yeah. And so uh, that's a, the, you know, as far as like drugs and alcohol, I'm abstinent from them. There are some mm-hmm. behaviors that I am abstinent from. One is binge eating. If I can catch it, I don't right. binge eat. And the other is sneaking food. I don't ever like, that is like, I can, visualize where my life will go if i do that and it's usually like ends up in a crack house somewhere you know like oh sure that, yeah, yeah. that is the kind of behavior that leads me to being dishonest with the people i love and i i really have to be radically honest with all of them yeah. and so in not sneaking food if my 17 year old daughter saw that i was eating mcdonald's she would she has the right to say something to me like, Hey dad, you yeah. told me you weren't going to eat that. Why are you eating that? Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I would give my two year old that kind of, <laughs> sure. that kind of responsibility, but like yeah. 17 for me, that's, she can have that conversation with me. My wife can absolutely have, you know, absolutely. I want to give them some position of power with areas that I know I'm going to have trouble with. Mm-hmm. you know yeah you know and i i try to i try to get them involved with uh what i'm doing as far as like food wise it's one of our house is kind of one of those things where you know my, my son is eight my daughter's 12 and for the majority of their life we haven't really done a um you know they don't get necessarily anything special for dinner. Like what we're cooking is what we're all eating, you know, or if we go out and get pizza or we go, you know, Burger King, McDonald's, whatever it happens to be, we're all eating that thing. Um, And, you know, I guess trying to get my daughter involved in that, I think would be a good, a good thing. And even my son, because, you know, you notice changes in them as well. Um, just seeing, you know, it's like, oh, my, my kids actually put on a little bit of weight. Is that because of what, you know, the way I'm eating or, you know, trying to think, are they modeling, you know, of course, cause they tend to mimic us as parents. That's, yeah. that's what they see all the time. Um, so no, I'm dude, that's a, that's fantastic. I would, I'm, I'm going to, you know, have a conversation with them and try to get them more involved. Cause that's, that's another way to be held accountable for you know, what you, how you're eating, what you're eating. And, uh, and even like you mentioned, like sneaking food, that's one of those things I've, I guess I've never really thought about how to put it into words, but I mean, it is what it is. It's absolutely, I'm sneaking away and hiding what I'm eating. Yeah. And I've done the same thing, get the chips and I'm like eating a couple of chips in my, my office or in my room or whatever it is, you know, and away from everybody, uh, or even eating dinner sometimes, they'll be all at the table and I'm, I'm sitting here at the desk and just eating away from them. So I can eat in my mind, it's eat in peace, but it's actually, I'm in here scarfing this huge bowl of pasta down or whatever it happens to be so that I don't feel guilty about having a, having made a bigger, a much larger portion than what they got. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's, that's hard. Um, that's a, that's something I, I got to take a different, you know, another, a longer look at too, because trying to be, trying not to sneak food is a, you know, you know, that's, I keep saying it's hard, but there, I don't know another word for it, man. That's it's yeah, a difficult I thing mean, to it, work it, on. It is. It's, it's also a lot of this stuff becomes habitual, you know? And so yeah. it's not, you know, I don't, when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm not thinking, well, now I have to brush 
tooth number 32 and now it's 31. Uh, It's just, this is what I've been doing for Mm -hmm. 30 years. And, you know, when I'm driving my car, I, I, it was fascinating teaching my 17 year old daughter to drive because I, for a while had to say, okay, gently push the gas slight turn on the wheel now feather the brake and you're talking through every little aspect and realizing there's so much that goes into driving a car check your rear window your Mm -hmm. mirror um yeah for me it's all automatic this is just how i drive i'm not thinking about any of that stuff my right my body is just accustomed to this way of handling this thing and and Mm -hmm. You really got to take it all apart and and look at all the little pieces and try very hard to catch yourself and go like, you know, if I kept getting a speeding ticket and I was like, no, but I decided not to speed, but you're not doing anything mm-hmm. else. It's just, I decided not to speed. <laughs> yeah, You know, you might not have success at not getting a speeding ticket. It might take more than that. Um mm-hmm more effort into how exactly am I driving? What am I doing with this thing? And so like, yeah, I know what you're, the way I spent the majority of my life when I just thought like, I want to lose weight that didn't do it. It was, um, trying to look at every little behavior and interaction I had with food and like, look, man, it sucks because there's going to be people on Instagram telling you just don't eat bread and you can, you don't have to worry about all of this shit, you know, or, Mm. you know, it's nightshades. Don't eat, you know, eggplant (laughs) tomatoes and and you'll be okay. You know, Mm. Um, that never worked for me. Those things never solved the the complexity of my life and my relationship with food because fine, don't, I won't eat tomatoes. I won't eat it, but I'm going to eat the shit out of everything else that, that I'm allowed to eat. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to still behave in these ways and I'm going to sneak little things of this or that here or there. And mm-hmm. I had to get really brutally honest with myself and with the people around me and, um, recognize that basically my life in that way was unmanageable and I have to make a radical change. And, not expect it to all happen in one day you know you 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 could look at these things and then continue looking you know spot Mm -hmm. some stuff and areas you can improve but don't shut down and go like well i spotted those two things that's Mm -hmm. it no i still years and years and years of doing this i'm still aware of stuff happening that i have that i go like oh i'm doing that's new I, i i need to work on that a bit now you know it's 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 quite a bit. Yeah, and and it's uh, it, it is it is a bit, and it's I do like the I mean the thought that I'm kind of having is that you know they say take you know take it take it one day at a time do everything one day at a time but it's almost like for people like me and you where we've got this relationship with food that it's I guess it makes I mean does it make more sense that it's more of like a analyze it on almost a I mean, more than just a day at a time, like you, you were saying earlier, make a, an appointment with yourself. Um, it's almost like you have to kind of micromanage your days to to get through those type of things. Like each day is a is its own struggle. Well, th- listen, that's why it's a day at a time. Because imagine if you if somebody said to you, you have to micromanage every day for the rest of your life. That's overwhelming. So it is. just try micromanaging tomorrow. And, sure. you know, if you can, if you can just go, <laughs> I'm just doing Monday, by the way, just, or tomorrow's not Monday, whatever day tomorrow is, <laughs> right. know, um, but like, I like a day at a time because today I'm going to improve myself somehow today. I've set goals that I'm going to achieve today. I know I, I sat with myself and I made my plan for the day of what I'm going to eat um, and I expect some turbulence too. I expect something to disrupt my plan, but I'm, I'm prepared to react to that disruption, whatever it may be in a way that isn't going to sabotage me. Um, yeah. but all I have to do is get through today. Tomorrow's a whole new thing. That's another day. And I will say this, Clint, um, 
it gets easier. It, it might seem on day one like micromanaging. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem like that to me anymore. It's still effort. It's not. Right. It's not a, a. It's not nothing. But it's way way easier than when I first started going. Like, okay, what does a day of eating only non-processed foods look like what is what is that okay and i get through that day and it took a lot of effort by day 600 that's just what i eat now you know okay more habit for you at that point yeah i mean i yeah. I, I am i am aware that living my life for the most part for 30 years in one way i don't undo all that those habits and behaviors in a day but i start looking for them and i start trying to implement changes where i can with the idea of eventually being my life being unrecognizable to what it was for the majority of it you know yeah i mean that that it makes sense to me i'll tell you the and it's i'm not gonna say the hard part but i know that food is food and getting your uh, that relationship kind of managed or under control uh i guess the better way to put it is is kind of half the battle right or at least you know it, it's part of it you've also got to do uh the exercise it's well like we talked about earlier right yeah i i really think for me today food as far as my weight goes food is 99 mm -hmm. percent of it Okay. Exercise for me is 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 really just to feel good at this point. I just I go to the gotcha. gym because when I leave the gym I feel better and I've done something difficult and that part of that is just having done something difficult makes me feel better and physically I feel better and um yeah. as far as weight loss goes mm -hmm. if you sit and if your job is playing video games or working on a computer, some sure. movement is going to be beneficial to you for sure. Mm -hmm. But really it's, it's, you're going to get the most out of what, what you eat that, that gotcha. is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck for sure. More, more value there. Okay. Yeah. That's, you know, it's one of those things you hear people tell you, you know, uh, go to the gym and do cardio, cardio, cardio. And I've got, you know, I, I've been to the gym, man, and done, uh, you know, I remember posting Instagram pictures with just, a, you know, a, a gray t-shirt that's just drenched in sweat. And I've, I've done, I look back at it the other day, there was days I'd go walk 14 miles, hit the treadmill, get on the, the stationary bike. And I'm, I'm putting in as much as I can. And then I remember being miserable too, though, and just yeah. not really seeing any changes. Yeah, no, I, and, and then again, 14 miles, that's an epic day. Of, yeah. of moving and are you going to do it the next day and are you going to be able to build on it like I, th I really do believe as far as exercise goes mm -hmm. you got to be able to do it every day and you got to be mm -hmm. able to increase it a little bit too and so gotcha. whatever whatever that looks like for you don't mm -hmm. don't try to blow yourself up doing it because you're first of all you're going to get more physically hungry Mm -hmm. And that physical hunger um, could could make whatever food plan you've created for yourself harder to stick to. And, oh. and then there's also just the sustainability of it. Like, you, I want the structure of my life to be able to be replicated every day forever. And when I was doing a lot of cardio and stuff like that, it was not. I couldn't do that every day forever. Um, yeah. You know, I would be too exhausted to do anything else or too exhausted or sore the next day to, to do anything at all. And so yeah, that, that if you can walk a mile a day, do it. If you mm -hmm. can't, do less. But do you yeah. can find something to do, surely, um, even if it's three squats, whatever but yeah. something that you can build on a little bit, just a little bit of increase over time. And I don't mean every day. Like if you walk 250 steps every day this week, then next week mm -hmm. do 255 steps or something, you know, it doesn't sure. have to be these massive increases. Um, and again, I, I've, 
I have exercised weight off and that, oh, sure. that weight was impossible to keep off. Truly impossible. Yeah. That weight came back as fast as any crash diet I ever did because I can't kill myself in exercise every day forever, you know, but I can right. find a way to eat that is more within reason than I had been otherwise. And that is the way that I found most beneficial to weight loss. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it makes a lot of sense to me, man. It, it really does. Even I, I got a lot of work to do. You know, obviously I made it 500 pounds. There's, there's a lot of work to put in a lot yeah. of, a lot of changes to be, to be had. And yeah, you know, it's going to be another journey, man. Well, listen, why you go start your journey or what? And like, let's check in, in a, in a month or two and see how you're doing. Sure. How about that? Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah, Amazing. absolutely. That'd be great. I would love that, Clint. Yeah, thank you. Incredible. Thank you so much. I can't wait to hear your update. And <laughs> and you you could tell me, you know, I made an appointment with myself and I don't like myself and fuck that appointment and I'm not keeping it anymore. I, I, the, sure. you don't have to be accountable to me, but I would, I would like to hear what you've taken from this, if anything, and, and if, where you got. Yeah, man. No, I'm, I'm all for it. I, yeah, I, I appreciate you having me on and having the conversation. This has been, I've really enjoyed this and it's a lot of information to think on and for sure. Um, I'm excited to check in, man. Absolutely, man. Good talking to you, Clint. Yeah, good talking to you too, man.